So I heard that you just got yourself the DJI Avatar and you are very much excited in flipping that switch to manual mode. Stop. Are you really ready? Do you really understand the controls of manual mode? Have you spent like many hours on the sim practicing it? Well, no worries friend, because in this series of episodes, I'm gonna guide you through what manual mode is about and how you can fly it safely. Oh, by the way, these are the Solidcom C1 kits by Holy Land. They are probably the best affordable headphones for team communication out on the field. I actually waited a whole week to get these guys out of the box, but this episode is not about them, so I'll review them in a future episode. Stay tuned. Right now, let's get on with the tutorial. Camera Alpha, standby, standby. What's up fam, Rahim here and welcome to my DJI Avatar Manual Mode series. This is a very big topic, so I will actually have a few episodes which will spread over the next few weeks. So for those new here, do subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss an episode. Today's episode is meant to give you a better understanding of manual mode controls so as to start you off in the simulator. Yes, you heard me right, today's topic is not about getting you up in the skies yet because I expect you to go and grind in the sim. Because the thing here is that DJI did not say this. It is actually very difficult to fly in manual mode. Yes, they portray that it is, seems to be very easy with the uh, joystick, right? Uh, the motion controller, but in actual FPV manual mode, or so for us uh, FPV guys, we call it also acro mode it takes a lot of hours of practice and grinding on the sim before we even dare to send our drones up in the sky so Raim, if it is so difficult then why would anybody bother to get into manual mode because normal and sport modes of the dji avatar will limit you to a certain kind of flight characteristic in order to fully utilize the capabilities of this drone for example you have a subject like maybe a tree you just want to go up over under and then around the tree then that is where you will need to learn manual mode by spending time in the sim not only are you going to be working on the muscle memory but also you'll get used to wearing the goggles and get comfortable being in the cockpit of the drone. By first having the experience in the sim, it lets you realize that there is actually no automated features in manual mode. Many new pilots actually crash on the first go either because they don't know the controls or because they get dizzy and lose their focus in flight. Anyways, real aircraft pilots do actually spend many hours in sim training before they fly their real aircraft out in the skies, right? So you as the new drone pilot have no reason not to do just the same. Alright, let's get started with understanding the controls. I'll go through with you the differences between um, normal and sport modes compared to manual mode with the help of my trusty controller stand right here. I know you're eyeing these fancy sticks right here. I'll put a link in the description. You can get it or find out more about it. Right? So in typical fashion of normal and sport mode, in order to launch the drone, you'll have to bring down both sticks and inwards or you could just go 45 degrees inwards straight away and that will launch the drone in normal or sport mode so let's just say we are in normal mode right so now that the drone is hovering in place i'll just quickly go through with you my controls okay i am a mode 2 pilot so what that means is that in normal and sport mode i have my left stick as altitude control up and down brings the drone higher and lower while left and right will then be uh, rotation of the drone can also be called yaw. So now for the right side, moving this stick forward will make the drone move forward and bringing it back will then reverse the drone. Left and right is gonna be banking of the drone, right? So we can also call this roll. For the banking of the drone, you can actually have additional assistance by switching on a specific mode which will also roll and yaw the drone at the same time, right? So it makes it easier for you to fly. So now as a mode 2 pilot in manual mode, this is gonna be throttle control okay and take note that i have actually loosened and given friction to my throttle stick that it is able to stay in its place right now if you wanna know more about how to loosen that throttle stick there's a link up there okay so i think up here this is gonna be the same which is your for this side of the controls pushing your sticks forward will pitch the drone forward and bringing it back is pitching it backwards right same goes for left and right is going to be rolling the drone left and right. But something to note here is that if you allow the drone to pitch forward and bring the stick back to center, the drone is not going to come back to center. It's going to stay in its place. It goes the same if you were to roll it and you bring it back to center, it's going to stay that way. Moving on to its flight characteristics, if the drone is in normal and sport mode, it has the ability for GPS lock which will help it 
to hover in its place when there are no control inputs and also self-stabilize. What that means is that if you were to move forward and let go of the stick, the drone will actually level out, right? And stay in place. But in manual mode, it is pure piloting, right? There is, uh, it has GPS, right, to mark its position, but it does not have GPS assistance. What that means is if you were to pitch the drone forward and you will continue moving forward you have to control every single movement of the drone you need it to turn you will turn you let go of the sticks it's going to continue flying forward and that means you're going to crash if you don't take control of the sticks also to note in normal and sport modes is that the camera will self-level what that means is that it will keep the camera facing forward even if the drone is moving about unlike for manual mode the camera will be locked in place right um it depends actually how far you want to fly if you're gonna set it at 10 degrees then it's gonna make the drone fly slow but if you bring up to bring up all the way to 60 degrees that means you will have to pitch the drone to a very steep angle and then be able to fly forwards i wouldn't recommend a very steep camera angle because the higher up the angle the more you'll need to pitch the drone in order to see what's ahead and then the more throttle you'll need to use right so actually i normally will fly around that 20 to 25 degrees camera angle okay there is more to what the buttons and switches do but this is a basics episode just to make you understand what the flight controls are first um all that uh, and the setup will be in a future episode as we progress. Let's get in the sim and I'll show you how to unlock the drone and start flying in manual mode. Once you flip the switch in manual mode, it will actually show M in the left bottom corner of your screen. At this point is where actually you are still not flying in manual mode as you are required to move the sticks to a predetermined position to unlock the manual mode. Before you do this, this is the best time actually for you to set your camera angle upwards, right? 10 degrees will make you fly slow, 60 degrees will make you fly super fast. And as I've mentioned, I usually fly at 20 to 25 degrees. Once you are ready to unlock, you can keep the roll and pitch in the center and then you will have to bring the altitude control stick, which is the left stick, into the green zone. So this is actually a safety feature because the altitude control stick will become throttle once in manual mode. If it were to be in the center, throttle will be 50% and it will send the drone to the moon. Alright, so once you see the notification that you are in manual mode, pitch the drone forward to the preferred forward angle and let the pitch stick self-center. At this point, the drone will want to move forward and you will need to control the throttle to maintain flight. The drone will actually keep moving forward on its own, so pitch the drone backwards to slow down. To make a turn, there are actually two ways. As the drone is moving forward, what you're gonna do is roll the drone first, right? And then introduce yaw. So the drone will actually be moving in this manner. Moving forward, roll, your right that's gonna create a nice smooth turn now once you're done making that turn you're gonna actually ease up on the yaw and then unroll the drone right so if it's coming in from this direction you're gonna stop yawing the drone you will move straight and then unroll it okay there is actually a second method where you if you needed to make a sudden turn then just introduce roll and your at the same time right um i normally don't do this except if i'm doing fast acrobatic moves but if i'm going for that smooth cinematic cruise right then i'll do method one simply because i want that kind of like what you see in the movies the fighter pilots they tend to roll first right the drone uh, the drone or the plane right will roll first and then your away okay that kind of look in the footage in itself also looks nice to, in my opinion versus a sudden jerk and turn to left or right don't forget that you will still need to manage the pitching of the drone and its throttle so it's perfectly okay for you to start off with method 2 and eventually as you want more cinematic shots then you progress into method 1 so now let's talk about gaining altitude or changing your altitude in general right so the drone is moving about Right, you already pitched it forward and it's moving and you're controlling the throttle to keep it in its flight path. Um, you could change altitude by actually just giving it um, throttle, right? But what the drone is going to be doing is this, okay? More throttle, loss, less throttle. More throttle, less throttle. The video in itself will look up, um, change of altitude, yes, up and down, up and down. But if what you wanted, or should I say what we want in flight, 
should be a smooth gain or loss of altitude so how we're gonna do that is if you let's say you need to go upwards all right you're gonna pitch the drone facing the direction and give it throttle what that is gonna do is give it a smooth uh, gain in altitude and then you want to lower its altitude obviously you're not just gonna shut down the motors by bringing the throttle to zero that will cause you to drop and then in view you are practically free falling right so what you want to do is go up and then pitch down and off throttle right or ease up on throttle and that will bring the drone downwards okay so how is gonna flow the how the actual drone is gonna look like right going up going down going up and going down it's gonna be a flow right so that's how we actually change altitude not just as simple as just giving it throttle or um, switching off the throttle okay I just wanna give you a bit of a bonus acrobatics okay let's say you are comfortable flying in manual mode in the sim and you decide that you want to do a dive right you see an obstacle that you know, whatever it is a tree a building or whatsoever in the sim you want to do a dive what you're gonna do is gain some altitude first right go up pitch up and then as you're up there you're gonna kill your throttle and move the drone right even with the throttle off you can still move the drone so you're gonna pitch the drone downwards and that's where you will end up doing a dive right so now once you have entered the dive and the ground is getting close you do not want to crash yourself right so you will start to open your throttle to stabilize any drone jitters or prop wash if there is any oh, start opening your throttle and then pitch the drone upwards forwards and give it more throttle to maintain forward flight right so give that a go i mean it's in the sim it's no wrong there but if you're gonna start to do all this fanciful stuff do obey uh, whatever airspace laws that is applicable right for example singapore only has 200 feet that's about 61 meters there's only so much you can dive anywhere above that and you'll be answering to the law okay so as you get more confident in the dive you'd want to kind of purposely make it a late recovery right to get it as close to the ground as possible now of course you will crash if you don't make it but that's where we practice right with our throttle control getting it closer to the ground will give you that more of a dynamic kind of shot all right tfm that has been the basics of manual flight for the dji avatar i can't really say how long you will need to spend time in the sim because every single person has their own learning curve right some take longer time some can get it in a day but nonetheless um, you will need to grind in the sim so as to really get that muscle memory if you're doing all the steps right right your flight is going to be smooth but what happens when there is situations that need you to react quickly and that's where the muscle memory in in your fingers right with the controls you already know what is left what is right what is pitching what is throttle control yaw and roll all that is in muscle memory all right that's where we want to get you there and also at the same time get you comfortable wearing the goggles for long periods of time uh, by the way when i mean mention long periods of time we're not talking about half an hour please don't go and do that kind of stretch um FPV pilots, all right, our drones usually only fly for 5 to 10 minutes. Suddenly, the DJI Avatar, the DJI FPV, all right, okay, when I mean FPV pilots, I started off with DIY drones, right? So, those drones only went for, to five, uh, for 5 to 10 minutes. DJI FPV, more than 10. DJI Avatar, more than 15, right? It's actually very tiring to wear goggles for those long periods of time. Same goes when you're practicing in the sim. There is no need for you to go in long haul stretches, right? Do take up to 10 minutes of practice, take them off, sit in front of a fan, air conditioning or whatsoever to get some fresh air, right? And relax your eyes, relax your face because of the pressure of the goggles and all that, okay? So um, yeah, how long you need rest, that's up to you. But that's just what I wanted to drive at is that take breaks, all right? You, it will bring you a more enjoyable journey into manual mode versus grinding. Rahim say must grind in the sim. Okay, I'll spend hours, two, three hours at non-stop. 
guys don't do that don't tire yourself out right oh by the way even when you do have the muscle memory in there is no reason for you to quit being in the sim because fpv pilots do still get into the sim to sharpen their skills at freestyle flight plus especially some of the freestyle moves are just damn risky that you do not want to just send it right you want to give it some practice first in the sim get an understanding of how the the movement of the trick is how to flow it and then you'll bring it out on the field and give it a try of course accidents are always possible not saying it won't ever happen but that's where you want to practice in a safe zone which is a simulator before going to send your drone really out there in the field or as you are practicing manual mode in the sim Nobody's stopping you from going out there and fly. Just go out there and enjoy the skies in normal and sport mode, right? By being out there is where then you can compare. Oh, normal and sport modes have this kind of controls, right? Attitude of the drone. But whereas um, I'm practicing manual mode in the sim, it feels totally different. As simple as no self-leveling. Keep pushing the stick forward in manual mode and the drone will do a crazy spin for you. Okay, so can't emphasize enough, manual mode is a beast. Go and practice in the sim. Alright guys, that's gonna be it for this episode. Now I hope I have covered enough to get you started in practicing manual mode in the sim. Now if you have any further questions, leave me a comment. I'll respond to you as soon as I can. Alright, on that. Now for the next episode is where I will want to cover more about the setup to get you out there in the skies and also some tips for you out in the field now guys with that i'm gonna wrap it up now if you like this episode do give me a thumbs up subscribe if you are not already chat with me i'll get back to you as soon as i can pilots as always i'll see you in the skies peace